Hello and welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much to the sponsors. I truly appreciate it. It is you who make it possible and worthwhile to record these videos. So thank you. I truly am grateful for this. Today we'll talk about the quintessential vessel of the age of sail, the frigate. And oh, how many sins are hidden under this name. When we speak of frigates, we, of course, are thinking of the late 18th century, the classical frigate of anywhere between 32, maybe as low as 28, all the way to 40, 44 gun uh, vessels. But in reality, frigate over the centuries meant completely different things. As far as current research goes, the earliest mention of the word frigate comes from the Mediterranean and designates as completely different vessels. It has nothing to do whatsoever with what we are thinking of when we say the word frigate. In reality, it is a fairly small vessel with a Latin rig, if anything. By the 16th century, the meaning of the word, while we still see it in this sense in the Mediterranean, parts of the Mediterranean, in the north of Europe, on the Atlantic coast, in the North Seas, it means something completely different already. It means essentially a small, lightly built and somewhat lightly armed vessel that is uh, designed specifically for speed. The most famous, of course, were the small frigates of Dunkirk, and Ostend of the early 17th century. They, in fact, caused enormous, they, they wreaked enormous havoc within the trade fleets of the United Netherlands. So they were the major pain in the neck with which the great Martin Tromp had to deal. Gradually, of course, frigates grew up in size, uh, meaning of the term moved back and forth, changed slightly, modified. By the end of the English Civil War and the beginning of the Protectorate, we see the term referred, referring to actually two-decked ships. It began with smaller vessels, sometimes in English the smaller what uh, the Dutch would have called yachts in the early part of the 17th century, the English would call pinnace. Um, the most famous of them, of course, is Swan in 1643, which uh, another similar frigate was lost at Duart Point. It was excavated and published extensively by Dr. Colin Martin, one of the foremost archaeologists of um, the Armada Rex, but also 17th century ships. So, from the second half of the 17th century, we do have a number of contracts for the construction of ships surviving in the National Archives of the United Kingdom at Kew. And in many of these archives, we actually see 70 and 80 gun ships referred to as frigates. So-and-so is to build out of good and sufficient timber a frigate to carry a number of guns, 70 or 80 guns, on two decks. And then follows, of course, the specification, how much per ton it will be paid, the master shipwright will be paid for this, or rather the contractor, etc., etc., etc. Down to the pretty much the smallest detail is usually specified. Unfortunately, um, of course, contracts exist only for vessels that were built on contract rather than in the dockyards, in the state dockyards. Very annoying fact, but a fact nevertheless. So the point that I'm trying to make here is that quite different time. By the late 18th century, we're hardly going to call an 80 gun ship of the line a frigate. So what did they mean in the 17th century by it? Essentially, it meant a vessel that is lower built with lower superstructures than the old galleons carried. In uh, the frigates, gradually, the meaning changes also for, uh, throughout the length of the 17th century. You will always remain, until the 18th century, you will keep on seeing in the contract specified that uh, the large ships are to be built on frigate model. Uh, 
But what they mean is to be fairly sharp built rather than squarish like a merchantman. That they will, some of the vessels had poops, but the poop decks would be cut down and lower than in earlier periods. By, after the experiences of the wars with the Barbary Corsairs, the jihadists of Tripoli, Argiers, etc., Sali, the Royal Navy yet again was encountering vessels that were faster than their own ships. Here it was not so much superior design or anything of the sort, it was mostly that the Corsair vessels were clean, coming out of port, they did not have to keep the seas, they just ran, captured whatever they could and they returned to port and could be cleaned again in a way that the patrolling Royal Navy vessels could not. In this period also it was recognized that the lighter enemy vessels are capable of uh, being rowed in uh, still winds when Royal Navy vessels would just be becalmed. So that is the context in which the Royal Charles, the Royal James and eventually the Mary galley were designed and constructed. We will not spend time discussing exactly how the design emerges. Suffice it to say that the great King Charles II was deeply involved with these vessels. How did they perform? Uh, they are known as galley frigates because on the lower the on the main deck of the vessel, they, instead of having a full battery of guns, they actually had oars, sweeps. How did they perform? Well, they performed about as well as they could be expected to perform. They could never outrow a galley, of course, and they were never intended to outrow a galley. They were found in a straight fight to be lighter armed than an equivalent sized uh, normal fourth rate or a fifth rate frigate. So they did not stack particularly well against other similar sized vessels. But they proved to be fast sailors, they proved to be maneuverable, and they were heavily involved in the Barbary Wars. As derivatives from them, the galley frigate became very, very popular also among merchant people. Probably the most notorious of the galley frigates is, of course, the Adventure Galley. So how do they differ? How do these frigates differ from the other ones? Well, they differ by being lighter, with fewer guns, uh, usually lighter guns. They could obviously also be rowed, but they did not have poops. So they were beginning to look like a modern frigate. They had only quarter decks, they had very low forecastle, and that was that. In the early 18th century, a number of vessels, cruising ships, were developed. And uh, that, however, shall be a subject of a different video at a different time. So with this, having looked at 17th century development of the term, having reached the galley frigate, the emergence of the galley frigate, I bid you a most wonderful rest of your day. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you ever so much for uh, supporting this channel. Kudos to the sponsors. Thank you. I'll see you next time.